Good evening, idiots. <laughs> Shredded. <laughs> Welcome back to Schwab. We're back from our mid-season break. Mm-hmm. Is this the mid-season break? They have so many breaks. I guess this would be what it is, right? This is the pre-mid-season break. Pre-mid-season break? It's practically <laughs> mid-season. God, it's not far enough into the season is the thing. And then <laughs> they're going to be taking a break to rest off their break. <laughs> Today, we watch Season 2, Episode 9, Guess Who's Coming to Safe Space Seattle. Mm-hmm. It's Jesse from Buffy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mention Buffy, but the most important character from Buffy is on <laughs> Jesse, the most important Buffy character. <laughs> the guy from the pilot who died. <laughs> he could have been uh, in the intro. <laughs> They could, yeah, put him in the intro. Um, I believe he's going to last on Charmed about as long as he lasted on Buffy. <laughs> Just oh, to say, well, I don't think you're he's... R- wrong because he's already lasted an episode without dying, so. It was a two-parter. It was a two-parter on Buffy. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Maybe mm. he'll die in the next one. <laughs> I give him um, a season if I'm generous. <laughs> I think by next season he will be gone. Yeah, that's it. That's a safe bet. Safe, safe, safe. <laughs> safe. Uh, speaking of announcements, um, yeah, so the cancellation demon has been vanquished. <laughs> <laughs> Again, for some reason. For some fucking reason. The most insulting thing from that, um, the, the thing I read uh, that was uh, about that was that it called Charmed a veteran show. <laughs> a veteran show. A season and a half is a veteran show? What? Good God! TV is a hellscape. <laughs> you know, I've seen shows I wanted to continue a lot more that got canceled, <laughs> yet this persists. It's like yeah, it's like things that don't need to keep going on do, and then it's like, oh, this has promise canceled. <laughs> yeah, this was gosh, this was apparently the second year in a row that uh, the CW did not cancel any of the shows in their lineup. Mm. Which is, uh, I mean, it's pretty surprising uh, in the TV climate these days. But gosh, Charm did not need to be renewed. I, you know, I'm not actively rooting against it, but gosh, I, I guess I am now. I wasn't before. But like the way season two has been going, this is awful. I don't like it. It makes me sad. It makes me miss season one because season one had a lot of garbage in it, but it was more entertaining. <laughs> I mean, this episode was sort of entertaining, but I mean, mixed. They, like, like any of this new Charmed, I think everything's mixed. I don't, it's like season one had some really dull moments, too. <laughs> Sitting around with that Galvin has a new girlfriend storyline and like crap Yeah, but like they've that. replaced it with Jordan's law girlfriend. It's great. Oh, it's, good. Yeah. it's good stuff. I love that. I always forget she exists <laughs> until she shows up. Was I she did, in um, this one? She, yeah, he talked to her at, uh, at Safe Space. They were studying for their exams and oh. she was mad that he was uh, focused on Maggie's baggage. Mm. I believe that was his girlfriend, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was. I guess it just was blanking during that scene. How, that's how impactful she is. <laughs> uh, I did uncover some uh, rumors swirling around uh, in the Charmed fandom. I didn't share with you until now, Phelan. Here's the big oh. scoop. <laughs> so um, Ooh, apparently boy. there was a, a podcast with one of the people that was on the creative team last season. Yeah. Before they replaced everyone, basically. Right. And one of the things that they wanted to do was invite Shannon Doherty to be on the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in some capacity. I'm not sure in, in what way. Um, but the CW turned them down. They said, d- no, they couldn't do it. <laughs> I bet she would have done it, too, if they'd asked her. Well, that's uh, lean. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see her, yeah, as like a villain. I bet she would have just been one of the elders or something, though. I want more something, something more interesting than that. Yeah, like maybe open up the possibility of multiple dimensions or something. The dimension where Prue didn't die, or <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, it could be something like that. 
Um, yeah, that would have been interesting. And if they're still thinking about something like that, maybe they should, because they need to save this with something. Mm -hmm. What's going on now ain't working. Yeah, if she was like some alternate dimension version of Prue, that could be interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know what and I think the like, difference... She's like, no, I slayed my demon harpy sisters from my dimension. <laughs> yes! Oh my god! It's the evil dimension from, um, it's it's a bad, 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 bad world or whatever. Um, But in that dimension, like, Prue is still alive, and so she slays her evil sisters yeah. there. Who <laughs> is the slayer? Yes! In every generation, the slayer is born... <laughs> Just have a flash Jesse's back. real fucking nervous. It didn't work out for him the last time he was with the Slayer. <laughs> it's a meat layer. It's definitely people. It's people. It's people. Probably not the chickeny part, but who knows? Who knows? What about the cherry pie? You know what I think the difference is between this season and last season in terms of of my enjoyment is that um. They were both bad. Let's <laughs> let's get that right. Um, there there are um, there's a promise in some of it. Like there's aspects that I like, but as a whole, I I think it's pretty bad. And last season was um, bad, but their heart was in the right place. I think um, this is bad in that they like they have contempt for themselves in the audience at this point and that's the the part that just feels kind of icky to me i mean they did do a lot of retooling last season for sure but i feel like at, at least it's initially a, they started trying to make something worthwhile well, after the pilot i think it kind of fell apart <laughs> <laughs> and then it became the show that revamped itself and i mean <laughs> now it's just kind of a show that's confused within a singular episode without revamping every episode <laughs> That's true. Uh, either way, I just feel there's this sort of like mean spirited contempt over this season that like I'm not vibing with. Yeah, I don't know if it's really contempt or just confusion. But it's <laughs> Con contemption. It, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a mess. Whatever it is, <laughs> confemt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Another thing that's kind of bothering me too. Is that um the focus on Harry, while I do think that this is it's by far the most interesting storyline that they've they've had going, and um I do think that that Harry and Macy are their strongest characters. I don't feel like a show that started out um really want to focus wanting to focus on uh women of color, uh people of color in general, and w women, LGBT, all this stuff, to have such a heavy focus on the one white straight male character really i think is kind of like a against what they started out with i think uh, there just needs to be a better balance with like good stories with the other characters too not so much heavy on that the only thing i don't like about what their storyline right now is the fact they're dragging their feet on it <laughs> yeah uh, one thing I'll give this episode, they didn't have Abigail in it, and so I liked it better because of that, because her character sucks. Right. <laughs> yeah, automatically this was a better episode without her, because, yeah, she got really annoying quite quick. <laughs> yeah, it felt like um, a, a, like a weight was lifted, not having her around just, like, dragging down all the scenes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it wasn't so much about Harry in this episode, too. It was about the sisters and their father... And there's some stuff about safe space, too, but there was less focus on that story, yeah. even though it was present. But, yeah, like all these episodes, though, they jam in a bunch of little storylines. So it's like there's a little bit of the Harry Macy thing going on, but it's not the A plot. It still felt a little unfocused. I think it's because they're they're going for more of an overarching story than episodic anymore. And I, I wish it was more of a mix of both, because a lot of them tend to kind of feel feel like filler because they're they're all just sort of like on the same storyline not getting to a point yeah what i liked about harry and macy before too like it was even true of earlier this season they weren't hiding things from each other they're just kind of being forthright and now they're not <laughs> and it's really annoying because it's just yeah. making things take longer for no good reason 
Secrets. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> it's like, oh, you going Secrets in the bunker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't like, you love it? Yeah, because at one point, like, Macy's going on a date with some guy just to try and stop him from doing something, but Harry clearly wants to say something to her about it because he clearly likes her, but they won't have him say anything about it and just gets mopey. It's just like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it's not really clear what all... I, I guess he still doesn't know that Macy knows about what happened with Abigail, right? That they made out because she walked in on him? <sighs> yeah. She, she didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're yeah, beating... hanging in the air. Yeah, I forgot that happened. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, well, let, let's uh let's dive right in here. We've we've talked long enough about uh overall complaints. Let's get specific. <laughs> let's get into this episode. Um so so everything begins with uh, a close up of Maggie and her beanie hat. <laughs> While some music plays is, all badass. <laughs> this whole sequence is so stupid. <laughs> Well, what happened, Phelan? <laughs> so you see someone about, like, to attack Maggie, and you're just kind of cheering them on, like, yeah, get her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then she's, like, using her new psychic power to, like, uh, read their moves, I guess, and then, like, <laughs> pulls out a collapsible nightstick and, like, s- beats him a bit with it and sweeps the leg and takes him down, and he slams into the sidewalk. And then it's just uh, Boxer Boy Jordan. He's like, (laughs) nice work, Maggie. And he immediately gets up like that didn't just happen. (laughs) And they have a civil conversation because this was a planned attack or something just to see how cool she is. (laughs) But she's like, you're not going to take a nightstick to your legs and like back or wherever else she hit them and then get thrown onto the pavement concrete. And be like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> he's superhuman. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, especially after he recently had a concussion, too. You think he'd be a little more careful about this? Yeah. <laughs> he says something like, oh, we're going to have to use, or I'm going to have to get padding soon or something like, well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Why wouldn't you be practicing this stuff? Like in a in your boxing gym, uh-huh. like why would he be doing that? That that says to me that he's waiting in an alley like John Arbuckle to go <laughs> to, to go tackle her and surprise her. Like they've planned this out that he's just gonna like follow her around and then attack her at random, which is creepy. Why would you do that too? Like if if it's someone that like you know has a crazy ex, she's got all these weird hang-ups about you, your girlfriend's all weird about this, you're like, yeah, sure. So I'm gonna help her out by, like, attacking her from alleys. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's no good in-universe reason for this. Of course, it is just to fool the audience that we think someone is actually attacking Maggie. It's stupid, Wait, bad writing. <laughs> when she took out the collapsible walking stick, I thought she was, like, undercover as a blind person or something? Well, it wasn't a walking stick. It's just, like, a night stick. Night stick, It's not okay. long enough to be a walking stick. Okay. It kind of reminded me of that, though. I'm like, <laughs> like, it was, like, something a blind person would use. Mm-hmm. I wish Maggie was blind. It would give her a character trait. <laughs> her new character trait is cool. Beat people up with her collapsible yeah. baton. <laughs> Last episode, Parker died. Or she <laughs> thinks that he died. And all she can do in this episode is just like, oh, my heart's closed for business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the cool, like, badass Maggie now. I want to fight all the time. I've turned into Mel. <laughs> <laughs> clear what they're doing in this episode though she like makes a point like yeah i'll just beat them up and pulls out her stick again (laughs) just like oh yeah she's the new badass huh (laughs) she's the new badass i'm in need of a guilt remover spell i like to at at the end of that scene she walks away into the smoke all cool and they do like a tea kettle transition Mm -hmm. (laughs) like transition to the smoke from a tea kettle (laughs) Jordan also goes, can I walk you home? It's just like, <laughs> oh, don't you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Maybe he forgot, like I did, that she is even in this episode. <laughs> yeah, honestly, he's being so shitty to his girlfriend. He doesn't give a shit about her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, piece of garbage. But gosh, 
gosh, he seems like he seems like garbage. Like he just seems like garbage. That's the end of that thought. <laughs> he seems like garbage. And, he, um, <laughs> and then he flo- blows away in the wind like a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, crumple him up, get rid of him, charmed. <laughs> gosh, he. I just keep thinking back to that scene with Macy when she wanted lessons and he she she hit him or something, and then he was like all like grabbing her, threatening her. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what kind of fucking dude is this? Yeah. What is yeah. wrong with him? Like, I know that was a misdirect, but like that just means that he's an asshole. <laughs> but yeah, you don't put that into his character just to misdirect. Like they do so many dumb things in the show to try and misdirect the audience, and you're like, okay, but you're making this character like a monster just for this misdirect. <laughs> he's a character that doesn't seem to um have a lot of respect for women. Mm-hmm. To be honest, like he was all creepy with her, and he like just like is whatever with his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Like he just not a very likable person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stupid boxer boy. Yeah, like it's just stupid that they even gave him a girlfriend. Honestly, if like they're gonna have him be like this about it, <laughs> it feels like you know the Galvin girlfriend thing again. It's just like we added this as a complication, but for no other reason. <laughs> yeah, but because he's descended from a, a he's descended from a witch hunter, right? That was who was cursed by the that witch or whatever. I believe so. <laughs> so yeah, stealing uh, Sabrina the sitcom storylines. Um, <laughs> so I guess he's gonna be an antagonist since he he's sneaking around this whole time. Good. Gosh, I wish, but he's not even an interesting antagonist. He's so boring. <laughs> that was the noise, right? What? That Salem made. Good. Oh yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's super funny if you just say good. <laughs> Meow? Meow! <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> it's a stunt, Granny. <laughs> it's a stunt, That's Jordan. Jordan's new name. Goo? <laughs> Goo? Jordan the stunt, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> he did take a stunt in this one. <laughs> Don't I th- I think worry. Point- He's a stunt, Goo? <laughs> I think we have about 0.2% of the audience actually understand what we're talking about right now. <laughs> you didn't see me? I was never here. Okay, so uh, Mel is at home making hot cocoa or something. She's making something with a kettle. Uh, Maggie's focused on kicking ass. She's clearly kind of uh, uh, putting her attention on this after the Parker stuff. They talk about the fact that Jordan hit his head so hard, he doesn't remember anything about the attack Good. except Parker. Yeah, <laughs> he concussioned everything right out of him. Um, Maggie does say the line, this heart of mine is closed for business. <laughs> um, she touches the mug and she has a vision. Uh, the dark Harry is around, uh, still. They think that he's dead, but no, obviously not. Uh, and he's using a chakram. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which he the... obliterates the opening titles with. <laughs> Perhaps that was the most important part. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> yeah, we know who we know who the shocker was stolen from. Yeah. <laughs> Zena <laughs> We wanted to get Lucy Lawless in here to beat them up, but CW said no. If the villain was was Xena, <laughs> I don't even I don't it, I don't care how little sense it would make. <laughs> but, uh, we already it's said Zena. there's other dimensions apparently from the yeah. <laughs> messy finale of season one. So <laughs> there's one where Xena's around <laughs> after her chakra. They're like Xena's not in the charmed universe. I'm Lucy Lawless. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she flies. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if anything doesn't make on make, make sense on Charmed Wizard did it. <laughs> <laughs> so after the uh the vision obliterating the uh opening titles, uh Macy and Harry are in the bunker. Macy is trying to use her charmed powers. She still hasn't gotten those back, so she's trying to use them on a teddy bear. Uh it's not working. She's getting kind of frustrated. Uh did she use her hands before with her powers when she she did that before? I don't remember. <laughs> Here's a question, Phelan. What were her charm powers again? Uh, <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> Fuck. Was it the telekinesis again? Or was it... Yeah, maybe. 
Are you blanking on the powers? It feels like shit. I'm gonna Google. People are gonna be mad if I if we don't know. <laughs> yeah, it feels like seasons ago. Considering how many times this show changes what it is. <laughs> oh, hey, here's some trivia. Macy's last name. Can you tell me what it is? <laughs> <laughs> Not Vera. <laughs> Vaughn. Vaughn. <laughs> okay, what is her powers? Nicknames Devil Woman. <laughs> By Galvin's grandmother. <laughs> oh. Oh, here's here's another one. Source Flame Macy by Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Macy dot Vaughn Instagram username. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Smoking Hot Oracle by Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Macy's birthday's 1990. She's younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so old. Status, alive, cause of death, stillborn. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> God, okay, tell me her powers. <laughs> Pyrokinesis. Well, that's, the pa that's the demon thing. What's her... Yeah, what's her normal thing, not the demon <laughs> shit? Resistance? Demine. <laughs> her power is whiny cat. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Kitty, come here. You're just gonna make noise. Whatever. It really She's trying to use say... whatever her pa- I don't- This is a lot of reading. <laughs> this is inactive powers. Power of three, immunity, resistance. I don't know what this means. Uh, move things with her mind. So, yeah. Okay, so she could move- It was telekinesis. Yeah. I guess, like, since the other ones, though, have had their power kind of mutated by this, like, tree sludge in the bunker, hers would be too. <laughs> so they could have cooler powers? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I gotta admit, the powers are kind of an improvement, though. Like, yeah. the freezy thing looks cooler, and Maggie having visions is, is way more interesting and useful than the uh, empathy power, which is why it sucked on original charm, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are both an improvement, I think. And, like, I don't know, the total, like, being able to freeze time is too overpowered, I think, of a thing to give her. That's why they had to just keep having people immune to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus, like, this is just an excuse for, like, Piper to be lazy in the other ones. So. Yeah. And then, and then they just gave her the blow them up, so then she just freeze and explode them. <laughs> Two hand waves. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Macy and Harry in the bunker with the teddy bear. Um, she's thinking about when she saw Harry making out with Abigail. She's all she's all upset about it, but she she won't say anything about it. Uh, Maggie comes in, uh, saying that she found the hotel from her vision. I guess from from seeing the uh the dark lighter Harry. She saw a hotel in the vision. Is that what the the deal was? I believe so. It was a uh, safe harbor. They got another safe yeah, name I thing. Yeah, I know. I was like, do we really <laughs> need another safe place, safe space, safe harbor? <laughs> so uh, Macy says that she should stay behind while they go. She doesn't want to get too close because of uh, her history with Dark Harry. And um, so Maggie's like, would you mind doing my job so we don't lose access to our bunker? <laughs> yeah, she gets a text. Yeah, this is so sloppy, too, because like, okay. One, like, Maggie's job is not the swan job, which is what she's getting Macy to do here, is, like, yeah. leading people around as the tour guide thing. Yeah, she's a manager. Yeah, and two, you can't have someone who doesn't work at the place sub for you. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were working there and then your boss is just like, yeah, I'm just gonna have my sister sub for me. Yeah, why? <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> We, Excuse me? Uh, we don't have them on the payroll. They're not hired here. No, you're not going to have them work your shift. <laughs> it's such a dumb problem to have that, like, if she misses one day of work, then they will lose access to their magical bunker and everything's fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just such a sloppy way to get her to meet the Jesse from Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, Macy is giving this tour and she hates it. She's a real negative Nancy. She seems to be speaking for the new creative team. Like, uh, welcome to safe space. Uh, 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 stupid snowflakes. Safe space. We don't know what it is. <laughs> what is Macy this stupid place? 
Macy just doesn't seem like the same character anymore to me. I feel like this just, it, she's so negative and like, it just doesn't seem like they would have done this with her character before. Have her be just like, it's really going to be safe speech. <laughs> yeah, she's moody, I guess, because everything, yeah, it's going, it's too much like, oh, the edge. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like that all of them are kind of, like, cranky and mean now. Mm. I guess they're all on edge, but I don't know. I just feel like it's... Macy's drifting into a different kind of thing with her character, and I don't know. I'm not sure on it. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of muddling both her and Harry right now, making them overly moody. <laughs> I think, like, they, they spend so much time focused on, like, her demon side, they forget that she, like, has a human side, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, she's giving this tour and she's uh she's pretty mad about it and this guy with a goatee shows up and he starts asking way too many questions and she's just she's just super pissed off. So she's like, "Fuck off." <laughs> <laughs> and everyone does the absurd crowd gasp. <gasps> but it turns out that was the wrong guy to tell to fuck off. He is a billionaire investor. <laughs> Who is the newest investor for Safe Space, Julian Shea. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, he was testing her. Uh, turns out he found this very uh, charming <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> even though fuck off. Yeah. She's not she's not employed there. She's yelling at people mm -hmm. who are customers. Mm -hmm. Are they? Uh, what do they do these tours around safe? Like, yeah, are they customers? I don't know. How do they make money? What do they do? They have like stores in there. I assume they pay rent, and that probably be the main way the building makes money. But it's just it, I don't know. It seems like everything's getting shut down for weird events half the time. Like it just <laughs> does not make any sense. Well, what do you know? It's not every day you see the stupidest thing you've ever seen. <sighs> Whatever. I'm jumping around a little bit uh, in this story. Uh, later on, um, Julian is having an inspirational hallway talk with everyone because they have no conference room. And he begins it by saying, good evening, idiots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he tells this uh, inspirational story about a uh, smoking jacket that he had when he was younger. He thought it was so cool, but it was actually really lame. Uh, and the moral of the story is only idiots can change the world. And he's uh, he's he's doing some sort of farmland thing under safe space. Mm -hmm. Real cool. Yeah. <laughs> this was another thing. Climate change. <laughs> <laughs> it bothered me so much that this is taking place in the hallway. Because, again, it's like these businesses in this place would be so pissed. Because constantly you're blocking things by having, like, weird meetups and conferences in the hallway like why doesn't stupid safe place have a room for this like they should have... i feel like they did have an office at one point they had an office where maggie did her well, interview to get the office job room but they should have like a big room so he can have his little panel in there well, who who are all the people he's giving this this talk to are they business owners See, are they just randos that was another thing that bugged me it's like shouldn't this be like some kind of pitch meeting to a uh, potential investor not just randos in safe space because that's all it seemed to be there because <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's pitching like a, a money making thing by having this underground field field of dreams or whatever he wants to plant down there <laughs> I was just, I was just so bored by it. I was just, the whole time I kept thinking about how I wanted it to be an episode about Maggie and Parker going to the zoo <laughs> <laughs> and having a very unusual day. <laughs> it just bothered me a lot about the hallway. <laughs> I mean, I would like the zoo. <laughs> but it's just like, imagine like you're at um, one of those conventions and someone's just doing a panel out in the middle of the hallway. You'd be like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> Get your ass in a room. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, idiots. Well, I'm gone. Bye. Yeah. You know, it, no one becomes a billionaire uh, morally. This guy definitely just, like, inherited it from his dad, right? Like, he has no business sense, actually. <laughs> yeah, he must not. <laughs> no. No, real scumbag, I can tell. <laughs> Macy obviously doesn't want this uh, underground farming thing to happen, because that's going to ruin their bunker. So she offers to buy him dinner. So she can uh, slip an influencer potion into his drink, 
uh, and make him not dig under safe space. If he takes the influencer potion, he's going to have an Instagram with like 2 million followers. <laughs> uh, he's going to be shilling uh, essential oils, um, uh, fire festival. It's just going to be a whole big mess. <laughs> And of course, Harry's like, I wish you wouldn't go on a date with him. And Mace is like, why? He's like, I can't say. Mace, Mace, don't go on a date. But I can't go on a date with secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to the m- bunker and mope. Wait, let me put on this indie song in the background. <laughs> it's going to be a real sad scene. <laughs> Kick over these dusty corpses of Dean and Sam. <laughs> Let's go from one of our two sets that we can use on the show now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, these corpses were really beaten to death, weren't they? It's like these should have retired a long time ago. (laughs) These corpses have been in here for 15 years. (laughs) Just reciting the same shit over and over. (laughs) Secrets. Why the hell did you do that? Anyway, <laughs> in a scene that you forgot, Jordan's talking to his law girlfriend, but he's so focused on Maggie's pro- problems. Um, and she's mad uh, that he's focusing on this. She's like, why you got to focus on this girl's baggage? She's got this crazy ex. She's clearly got this thing for you. And he's like, well, she's a good person. How does he know this? <laughs> Has he had any evidence? Yeah, there is <laughs> absolutely nothing that would hold up anywhere to prove <laughs> that Maggie's a good person. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, uh, he's he's starting to have some cracks in his theory here um, because uh, he starts remembering bits of what happened and he remembers Parker uh, calling Maggie Vera, Mm -hmm. which uh, doesn't really add up. So he Googles Parker Maggie Vera. (laughs) And he immediately finds something about Monopoly. (laughs) There's there's a listing in this Google search. It's like Park Place and Boardwalk. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) It's like, what? That was like the scene in Twilight when um when Bella is googling cold ones and then finds like beer because of course <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so he googles it and he finds Maggie's uh, MySpace obituary <laughs> mm-hmm. and realizes she's uh she's fucking dead. And that's another um thing about how crappy they are about their witness protection shit. And the fact they didn't change their first names to anyone else. So uh, the plot thickens with the Jordan thing. Uh, no, absolutely nobody cares. Uh, Maggie, Mel, and Harry go to the hotel. Maggie is in a fuzzy orange jacket over a snakeskin turtleneck and leather pants. This is quite a look. Yeah, she's evil now. <laughs> it the evil leather pants. <laughs> um, true return to form with a Maggie outfit. I feel like um, it's been quite a while. Mm. Since uh, since they've they've really toned down the outfits this season. Yeah, I guess the leather pants is her new badass pants. <laughs> Gosh, uh, yeah. One thing I I thought when I saw that outfit is badass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so their plan is just for Harry to orb from room to room at this hotel until they can come across Dark Harry, I guess? Yeah, and he orbs into one room. He's like, oh, they do BDSM stuff in there, lol. Anyway, let's move on with the plot. <laughs> See, that's why it can never work out with him and Abigail. She's clearly super into BDSM, mm-hmm. but he ain't comfortable with that. Yeah, apparently. Uh, they checked in on the wrong room. They find the right one next. <laughs> yeah, they find the right one next. They just go, go into one room, and then the second room they're done, which is uh, convenient. Uh, but they don't end up finding Dark Harry. They end up finding their dad! <laughs> <laughs> Legit question. Um, was anyone excited <laughs> or or angry, or feeling any sort of emotion other than indifference <laughs> at their father's return from the dead. Yeah, I don't know, I just kind of shrugged and thought, like, this is so this show to throw this in. He hasn't even been dead that long. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even have time to miss him. No. <laughs> but, I mean, we never met him before this. So. No. Total indifference. <laughs> He's just kind of like, I thought you were dead. I'm like, we thought you were dead. <laughs> Who brought our archaeologist dad back from the dead? Yeah, suddenly he's like this archaeologist type who's been selling the artifacts he finds on the black market. 
<laughs> yeah, by far the most interesting thing about this episode is the uh, the sudden unveiling that their dad is a relic hunting archaeologist. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, oh yeah, I was doing some underground deals and these bad people are now after me and that's why I'm in hiding and that's why I faked my death. Why are you guys alive? And they're like, oh, we can't say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, when they show up in the, uh, in the room, Harry attacks him because he thinks that uh, it must be some sort of supernatural thing, obviously, which would be more common. Um, and when he attacks their dad, he calls him BBC guy. Yeah, BBC guy. <laughs> All right, so their dad's a relic hunter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looks nothing like Tia Carrere. No, real disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was stealing a bunch of stuff, and he got into some trouble. That's why he had to fake his death. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maggie finds the chakram from her vision in his bag of stolen relics. He's just carrying a bunch of them with him. Um, Harry is outside while they're talking to their dad, and, uh, he sees a scary man in a hat coming for him. Yeah. So, uh, he's like, we gotta get out of here. The bye-bye man. The bye-bye man was coming. (laughs) (laughs) The why-why man. (laughs) Um, so he, he goes back inside and he just, like, punches their dad out so they can orb away. (laughs) Yeah. This is, like, a hell of a punch, too. It, like, it puts him out for a good while. (laughs) Yeah, gosh. It puts him out for a long time, but just, like, a little glass of water wakes him up. (laughs) Yeah. But it's like they orb back and, like, Harry leaves and then Mel and Maggie are having a convo (laughs) until they throw the glass of water at him. (laughs) How long was he knocked out from one punch? This is like the technique that only works in fiction. <laughs> Gosh, the, uh, it was, I don't know why it was surprising to me that their dad knows nothing about anything that's happened in the show so far. Mm-hmm. So they have to explain not only that his wife was a witch, but they have to explain that they're witches, uh, all the shit that happened. They got a half sister who's half demon and they, they blew <laughs> up because of blah, blah, blah yeah. and all this stuff. Like, that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> yeah. Cause he wakes up in the house too. He's like, I thought this house burnt down. Like, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> <laughs> We didn't start the fire, <laughs> but we had to go into protection because something, something. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't using your real names, though, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're not very good yeah. at this. <laughs> uh, Macy shows up, um, total indifference like the audience. She's got no connection yeah. to their dad. <laughs> I did, like, it's just kind of like, you know... <laughs> Um, Maggie and Mal are, like, you know, doing these hangouts with their dad, which are, like, you know, kind of not great, because they don't have, they don't really like him that much, but then it's, like, Harry and Macy are always in another room, kind of like, oh, this is kind of awkward, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You would think there there could be something interesting to be mined from that. Mm -hmm. In that, like, she is the illegitimate daughter uh, uh, from his wife, who he did not know was cheating on him, I don't think. Maybe that's part of why they broke up. I don't know. But that should have been a huge bomb to drop. Yeah, I would have liked at least some line of dialogue to... So we knew if that had anything to do with their relationship ending, or if he had no idea. Yeah, uh, really unclear what he actually is aware of Mm -hmm. (laughs) um nothing summarizes this better uh, than when macy shows up and uh and she's like well mm, this seems like it has nothing to do with me so she goes into the kitchen to hang out with harry for a while and harry goes kind of offhandedly oh wow what a plot twist anyway (laughs) so what about our thing (laughs) (laughs) you must be kidding aren't you (laughs) does not care yeah (laughs) And he knew about it, too, but what a plot twist, whatever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they go a little bit more into detail about uh, why Dad had to fake his death. Um, It turns out he he stole some stuff from them after their mom's funeral. (laughs) He snuck in. He's like, she won't need this shit anymore. Mel's like, what did you do, Ray? (laughs) (laughs) It just popped into my head. I couldn't help it. The YY man is my favorite character as a kid. <laughs> hey, does this cloaking device still work? <laughs> wow, you guys gotta try this. <laughs> Kids. 
so the things that he stole, uh, they they mentioned some specifics. I didn't I didn't catch what they were, so I don't know what it is he stole. But anyway, it was presumably some magical stuff. So some guys came after him, and when he came back to the house and found it burnt down, he thought that they came back and killed his daughters. So he faked his death. Um, really seems like that should be more emotional for him that he thought he got his daughters killed. Yeah, I thought it should have been more emotional on his side that they were alive too and he thought they were dead like it's kind of very very, very tepid yeah yeah like i understand um mel and maggie especially mel like she has a broken relationship with this guy so she's not gonna be super <laughs> thrilled to see him but you know i do like uh mel like calls him by his first name and stuff because mm. it's so impersonal to her yeah, uh, there, there's stuff here, character-wise. Uh, I just wish it was it was mined a little deeper. It all feels very surface. Yeah, we don't get that far in anything. Um, so there's like a, a cube in their dad's stuff. Um, I forget the transition here, but they think it might have something they're looking for in it. Uh, maybe they think it has to do with Dark Harry. I'm not sure. But either way, um, they open it up with uh, the spell that Mel uh, reconstructed from the... Uh, the Book of Shadows, and uh, they open it up, and it looks like a um, dried up blood clot or something. That they take out some like globby red stone. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be a head of some sort of some creature, but I don't know. It's a head. I think they it, keep calling it a stone, though. Well, I, like it was a stone sculpture of some creature head, I believe. Oh, it just looked like a bunch of bubble gum. Yeah, or it, it looks a like giant a, nerd. It did mostly <laughs> look like that. So as soon as they take it out, uh, it, it casts some sort of magic thing, and uh, the cloaking shield goes down on the house. Dun, dun, dun. And this is, dun, of course, going to lead to something, and it doesn't lead to anything. No, not even anyone in Seattle notices a house suddenly fucking appeared there. Nothing yeah, comes of you'd this. you think, like, stupid boxer boy would be, like, this would be another clue to lead him somewhere, since we're putting that plot thread in here. It's like, okay, if you're mm -hmm. gonna have it in here, have it go somewhere. Have him notice the weird house up here in the empty lot. No, no. No one sees nope. it. Nobody notices, nobody cares. Complete indifference. Yeah. Like, the best I can guess is the YY man needed to see it, but it's like, <laughs> well, the YY man's being attracted there by the stone anyway. Did he need the cloaking shield to no, go down? No, they didn't mention anything about him seeing the house no. leading him there. It was all the stone. Yeah, so... he was That was what was leading him to the hotel. Like, he doesn't need the house uncloaked. Yeah, so it was completely pointless to do that. <laughs> Um, they're like, we got to get rid of this stone, and the dad doesn't want to get rid of it. Yeah, he goes like, well, the fact it's magical increases its value <laughs> value exponentially. <laughs> Profit. Yeah. <laughs> you see, phase one, collect underpants. Phase two... Three, profit. You know what? I, their dad is such a fun idea of a character. I'm not sure it quite got there, but I do like this opportunistic, greedy archaeologist dad. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely an idea in there. That's kind of like one of the reasons. Like, I, I think this episode wasn't terrible, based like comparatively around what else we've been watching this season. But I mean, it's it's not great either, of course. <laughs> There's some fun things they can do. If they do more stuff with their dad, I, I want them to lean more into this. Yeah. This is this could be a fun character. But like, no one uses that damn shock room. No, but I think they're setting up for something. Uh, they better be. Because they didn't get to that vision where Dark Harry was holding it, so. Yeah, they should have had like Mel like do the Xena cry and throw it and it bounces off several <laughs> things and then into the YY man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> da 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 charmed. <laughs> but uh, they eventually convince him to give it up, but uh, when they try to take it from his hand, it's stuck there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a curse on it. Uh, it sticks to the thief until the, uh, the protector of the stone, the YY man, uh, can come get it. So, um, uh, sometime between that scene and the next time they show them, Maggie and her dad just go to hang out outside and have, like, some hang time. Yeah. No urgency to this situation. They're just like, hey, what's going on? 
You remember when, when you were a kid, we used to look up at the stars outside right here. Well, not here, but, you know, wherever the house was before. <laughs> yeah, they don't mention that, by the way. <laughs> they, they act no, like it's just, the same yeah. spot. <laughs> On the same backyard that we teleported here. Yeah, our whole backyard came with us. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that San Francisco yeah. soil. <laughs> <laughs> However, that whole backyard fits in there because it looks like the lot ends like right after the house when we see it there. <laughs> yeah, it's like a TARDIS that just lives in its own pocket dimension. <laughs> so Mel and Harry are looking up what the stone is. Uh, they find out it's a stone of Atreus uh, and all the things I just mentioned. It, it's from Crete. Um, so there's a, a Fury, that's what the YY man is, it's supposed to protect it, so it's coming to get it. The Fury is outside, and it turns out he's a Jabberwocky. <laughs> <laughs> he's got one of those masks on. He, uh, he takes the mask off and uh, reveals the same dumb face underneath. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Surprise! What was the point of that? I'm really the same guy. <laughs> How is that supposed to keep him disguised? Like, like not suspicious. Like, people see that and they're like, oh, it's just a normal guy walking around in a scary blank mask. Yeah. <laughs> Won't think anything of that. But we saw someone in the parking lot earlier walk by it and like, ah! And then they ran away. Yeah, what was that reaction about? <laughs> all, all they did was see someone in a mask and go, ah! <laughs> that person has very short nerves, you know? <laughs> I guess it'd be sort of creepy, but yeah, it might be a bit of an overreaction. <laughs> yeah, you might want to get out of there, but the immediate, like, ah! <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the Jabberwocky attacks Maggie and their dad. She hits it with her stick, and it splits in half. It's kind of a gooey split. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. That was an okay effect. I think it was all CGI, but that was pretty good. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the, the face looked bad, but... <laughs> My favorite part but of this I, was, though, after Maggie splits them, she goes, all right, follow me, Dad, and runs up the stairs after he's, like, knocked down laying on yeah. the stairs, like, right she in front of the thing. There. It's like, <laughs> the next shot should have just been, like, his head rolling down the stairs. Oh, <laughs> uh, oops, I guess I should have helped you up. <laughs> Oopsie diddle. <laughs> oh, well, we weren't that close. <laughs> Time for skinny mags. Ooh. <laughs> but I know everyone's not interested in this. They're interested in Macy's cute date with her billionaire boyfriend. <laughs> mm. and he's all like, did I tell you I was on Buffy? She's like, yeah, like one episode. Shut up. Oh, only like a million times. Gosh. But, but they, they almost were going to do this funny gag of putting me in the intro titles. and But it would have cost too much probably. So they didn't. <laughs> you know, he really started the date off on the wrong foot by saying, Good evening, idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for dating me, idiot! <laughs> <laughs> a model idiot! <laughs> you know, one time I started a date with, Thank you for dating me, idiot, and it didn't go well, and I learned my <laughs> lesson to do it again until it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the whole restaurant applauds. <laughs> yeah. he's like farming global warming yeah rods in the vegan taquitos <laughs> rods they're like yeah soul panels soul panels <laughs> that's it i'm getting a charm that's more environmentally friendly <laughs> this could not be more telegraphed if they if they were trying and i think they were trying to telegraph it very badly mm -hmm. um so, uh, th th this is a new love interest, clearly going to get in between the uh, Macy-Harry love thing. Um, what starts out is Macy trying to manipulate him, obviously. There, there's some sparks there. Uh, because he loves science, too. They love science! Yeah, because we needed another person in the middle of this when we already did the Abigail shit. We don't need more love interests. No. I think getting rid of a love interest and then replacing it with another love interest is not great. No. So uh, she's trying to convince him not to uh, not to do any digging, and uh, he's thinking that this is all coming off very suspicious and weird. She keeps coming up with all these these reasons, um, and then his uh, phone starts vibrating, and he goes, "Save by the buzz." <laughs> 
Um, while he's gone, she laces his drink with the influencer potion. But when he comes back, it turns out uh, that she was correct all along. Uh, he didn't consult an environmental biologist uh, about what he was doing. So, uh, so she didn't need to lace his drink after all. Yeah, he's like, I want to do this the right way. I'm Mr. Nice Guy. I absolutely am stopping this until we have it all figured out with the salamanders. The only honest billionaire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> billionaire nice guy um he really lays it on thick too and like he's like you know what this is the most honest conversation i've had in a long time i really respect honesty 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 <laughs> honesty honesty's great honest abe that's what they should call you you're super honest 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 i can't you see you doing anything dishonest <laughs> 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 toast to your honesty and she's like <laughs> right <laughs> breaks his glass yeah. smashes the well she spills it on he's him like, anyway she I, spills all his wine I on him i promised i would save the sun Salamanders, you didn't have to dump your drink on me. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for Evolved Janeway. <laughs> no one ever thinks of the salamanders. Uh, when she does that, he goes, good one, idiot. <laughs> but he means it affectionately. He's honest, you see. Yeah. Anyway, they're like, let's go back to safe space and clean your shirt. Why did they do that? Why did they have to go back to safe space to do this? this? Is so stupid. <laughs> to have, you know what? I'm surprised they didn't make him just fully go shirtless for sexy times. You know. <laughs> um, but this is clearly for them to have a, an intimate moment while an indie song plays in the background, mm. as they do very, uh, very often on this show. Uh, I look forward to vaguely remembering him a season or two from now and saying, "Oh yeah, that guy was on here." You'll never forget uh, Jesse. <laughs> oh, who could forget Jesse? <laughs> um, but Macy gets a text uh, that her sisters are in trouble, so she le leaves to go help them. Um, so she shows up at the house uh, with Harry and Mel, and uh, Maggie and their dad are being cornered by the YY man. Um, and the more that they attack it, the more it splits into different pieces, and, uh, and they realize that uh, they gotta give him the stone back. Uh, to get rid of him, and he starts trying to suck Maggie into his giant mouth. <laughs> his mouth turns into, like, a hoover or something. <laughs> Why does it go after Maggie first? Why does the dad have to walk in front of it with the thing it wants? Shouldn't it be going after I... him since he has it? It's like, um... It's like a, a, a whale trying to get krill in its mouth. It just sucks in everything around <laughs> it until finally the stone shows up. <laughs> it's not really an effective method of, uh, of retrieving it. <laughs> it's kind of like Kirby. They're like, Wurrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
So uh, with that all done, uh, Maggie and Mel are talking in the kitchen and they're like, hey, dad went out to the liquor store. Do you think, oh, no, <laughs> he just left us again. No, they just think he took off. They don't know he went to the liquor store until he. He said he was going out for something, yeah. but I guess he did go to the liquor store. Yeah, but Mel. Either way, they think he just like was like, yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah, Mel <laughs> thinks he took off. He's like, yeah, you notice he's gone already, piece of shit. And you're like, oh, I just got liquor. Let's get drunk. <laughs> The fact that he does come back and everything's so pleasant, um, it's kind of like what they did with the original Charmed and their dad and that, like, they built him up as such a, like, asshole. And the first time he showed up, he was. And then after that, he was just, like, nice guy. And it's like, why did any of this happen, though? Mm -hmm. All of this, like, I, I get why the characters would be resentful, but to the fact, like, everything they, they talk about him being so neglectful and such an awful person and then, like... I don't know. I guess, I guess, like, there are a lot of dads that are like that, where, like, when they're with you, they're fine, but they're not necessarily good dads. It just all seems sort of milk warm. Yeah, lukewarm. They, milk toast? <laughs> milk warm. They, they kind of... <laughs> That's a new word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should have, like, you know, painted him a bit, though, like, with the neglectful dad brush in his appearance on the show. Because they, they didn't, like you said. They just kind of... I think they should have shown more of the negative aspects exactly, of him, too. yeah. Because it is. It's just kind of like he's too nicey-nice, I guess. He's like, oh, yeah. oh, you guys kept my favorite mug. Oh, I love you so much. It's like, there had to be some more negative aspects to this man. <laughs> mm-hmm. And maybe we'll see them. Honestly, I would like if he showed up more... And they explored their relationship a little more, and we, we focused on their family dynamics. Yeah, we can show that he cares about them to some degree, but still have him kind of be the self-centered ass, which led him to walking out on them. Yeah, let him have some growth, if you will. He doesn't have to start, like, immediately redeem himself, you know? Yeah. Like, let, let him have that journey. Because, like, maybe there's some reason, like, he they find some other artifact was gone, and... yeah. Yeah. And you left a note, like, said something like, oh, sorry, but love you girls or something. <laughs> but I need to make my yeah. money back. And they're just like, oh, mm -hmm. that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys hanging out with the YY man. <laughs> Picture of him and, and the YY man on the beach in Crete. Like, wish you were here. <laughs> Macy and Harry are talking because all of their scenes have to be separate from everyone else. And um, Harry thinks that their dad could have released Dark Harry since he released some other stuff. He thinks maybe he had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Why was it that he came back? Th it was just because they can't kill him, right? Because he just resurrects like Harry does? Or, or are they leaving that open-ended? I don't know. Mm, either way, I don't think their dad had anything to do with it. But Harry thinks it's a possibility anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, Maggie is at work and... uh. Swan name drops Old Navy before leaving. <laughs> That's her thing, product placement. <laughs> yeah, she's just the <laughs> she's the diet mug root beer Dana Carvey hour of the show. <laughs> By the way, we saw her in the crowd, like when um Jesse's doing his speech in the hallway of safe place, space, whatever it is, <laughs> and it's like safe space. Yeah. Um. So it's like, why was Macy having to do the tour if? Yeah, I don't know why she wasn't doing it. Like, that's all Swan does. She just name drops <laughs> and does tours. Yeah, so, so it made even less sense that Macy had to do this. Swan's hanging out there anyway. <laughs> Jordan shows up to bore the audience. <laughs> and he goes like, oh, enjoy your Java. <laughs> cool. What a great moment that was. Um, and that's also, uh, he can follow Maggie to the bunker. Yeah. Um, as she just, goes in, he just sticks his foot in yeah, and stops the door. He's just going <laughs> to casually, you know, confront her in this back room. Oh, hey, just uh, one more thing. <gasps> yeah, what do you think he was following her into a back room for? Yeah. Ugh, do not trust. Yeah, real John Arbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Monster John Arbuckle. <laughs> like John Arbuckle before him. <laughs> History's greatest monster. <laughs> and that was like such a like wet fart of an ending too. It was like, Bleh! like what? Yeah. He just sticks his foot in the door and walks in, and then credits. <laughs> yeah, he, he just kind of looks around like, oh, Maggie's gone, good, and then he leaves. <laughs> cool. Just like guys, you need to shove all these stories in one episode if you're not going to have anything 
meaningful with them. I'd been fine if we did not see Jordan this episode. <laughs> yeah, really didn't care. Uh, so, Phelan, what what are your overall thoughts on this episode? Mm, medium, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I'm disappointed with the lack of anything going on really that interesting with Harry and Macy since they've been the show's best characters for a long while now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, I'd say the Mel and Maggie stuff was elevated more than usual in this one. So that's a plus sort of, and their dad could be interesting, but like you said, I wanted to see more negative aspects to him since there's clearly a large negative thing about this man, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but him being a relic hunter is amusing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I feel like so much of this show is, it could be, but it isn't. Mm-hmm. It could be a lot of things. But so far, um, what I felt about this episode, I, I wasn't upset like last episode. I really hated the last episode. Mm-hmm. But total indifference uh, really summarizes everything <laughs> for me. Like, I'm glad that they're focusing on the family stuff. I wish that Macy wasn't so separated all the time from what her sisters were doing. Yeah. Um. But it just, it didn't get anywhere. It was, like, close to a lot of things, but didn't actually do anything. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, Hopefully this picks up next week. Maybe this means they're shifting things a little bit again. But who knows? Once Abigail shows up again, it's just going to be annoying. (laughs) Yeah. I felt like it's way too making it easy at the end as well that Mel stays and has a drink with the dad, too. I feel like she should have left at the very least, and it's just Maggie and him. Could have had something, Mm -hmm. but didn't. Yeah. Well, that's all I gotta say about this episode. (laughs) What a triumphant return of Schwab. Can't (laughs) wait for their next break. Ooh, can't wait. I look forward to it. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this uh, Charmed Hard with Vengeance, uh, I'd appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, or review on whatever platform that you are enjoying this on. Uh, You can find us in audio form at anchor.fm under Charmed Hard with Vengeance or Charmed Rewind. Uh, You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash movie nights the series or youtube.com slash phalus. Uh, if you want to support us on Patreon, uh, get uh, early access to videos or uh, take part in polls whenever Charmed Rewind's going on, other stuff like that, uh, you can find me at patreon.com slash movie nights or Phelan at patreon.com slash Phelus. Thanks to Peter Hunter uh, for editing this for us. You can find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter. Phelan, uh, what are the hashtags we should do? Hashtag YY man. <laughs> Hashtag total indifference. (laughs) Hashtag see you, Charmanders. (laughs) 